and welcome back to my shop Rob from Woodsy Summercraft here. Today I've got this piece of almond wood that I purchased. Um, it is actually wet, it's not completely dry. So what I'm going to do is just rough turn it, a basic bowl style. Um, may end up as like a calabash bowl. Um, it's approximately 10.5 inches in diameter and 5 inches deep. It's pretty heavy. Um, it's very hard. I cut it on the bandsaw, it's pretty hard wood. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I've never turned on before, so we'll see how it looks. Uh, it does actually have a piss right here with some cracks in it, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with that yet, whether I leave it there with some CA glue in there or eliminate it altogether or, or not, I'm not sure. It really depends on, on how bad it is when I get to, uh, to get to that point. We will see. Anyway, um, I'm going to basically clean this up and get it trued up because right now it's out of balance a fair bit. So. Wow. That is more out of round than I was hoping. Um, and it is quite a few months later. I had this thing on the lathe, it was horrible to turn it, it vibrated my lathe to no end and since then I have bought the Laguna uh, 1836 which has much better control over my speed but also this has been sitting and drying and warping and cracking as you can see it's got some pretty nasty cracks in it um, but it's still a lovely piece of wood and it cost me quite a bit of money to get it from Hawaii to Canada. This is the almond, as we mentioned before. Um, it has definitely warped and cracked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on a uh, faceplate um, with some heavy duty screws because it's still a very heavy piece of wood. And then I'm going to return basically the whole outside of it again um, with a new a new mortise. I might even go with a tenon. I think I'm going to go with a tenon. Um, just lately I've been enjoying the look of tenons when you remove them it just gives it that extra special look I guess I don't know I just like it so anyway that's what I'm gonna do so I'll put the face plate roughly where the center was before which looks to be about there These So as you can see when I turn this on slow speed it has warped considerably although it's hard to get the faceplate in the exact same position it was because like I said this was on my old lathe and the faceplate was different so the screw pattern doesn't match so I'm going to take my bowl gouge and I'm going to chew up this back face and around the sides and then I'll make a tenon on the back for my large set of jaws which are about uh, four inches roughly on the inside, three and three quarters for the uh, tenon. So I'll bring this up to speed slowly, to a safe speed, and I'm going to stand out of the firing line, and then uh, we'll get this tenon put on. And that's chewed up the underside. Looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to continue with pull cuts around the side of the bowl, remembering that there's these cracks. So I've got to be very careful. They're lateral cracks. Um, but I don't want to see this piece of wood come in half. That wouldn't be good. So this wood is spalted, but it's not too punky. It's still pretty hard. So that's good news. So even with pull cuts, I can get a reasonably good cut. And we're on a slow speed as well. So until it's really trued up, I don't want to turn my speed up until I've also stabilized these cracks. Uh, what I want to do is add some sort of a color into those cracks. 
I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to use yet. Possibly I have some turquoise type material. I think that might be quite good with uh, CA glue. Okay, I think I am going to try a push cut. Because these cracks are giving me some some grief. So let's uh, see if we can bring the speed up just a little bit and try a push cut. Starting out pretty good. Picking up from where I left off, continuing around the bowl. It's just starting to uh, lose right here. You can see where I have to go a little bit deeper. This is going to be a calabash style, as I recall. Uh, so I'm going to bring the front end in. The front edge was going to come in a little bit. Yeah, that crack's pretty, pretty big. But that's a good place for some uh, color or enhancement to go. Okay, the shape isn't quite what I'm looking for yet, so I'm gonna continue. Okay, I think what we need to do now is to uh, get some filler in these cracks. We're going to stabilize these cracks next. I'm not one to do a whole lot of inlay but in this instance I'm going to be using um, this cobalt blue uh, pigment essentially that I picked up here in Canada at www.colorrare.ca. I've got a whole bunch of, uh, of their colors that I purchased quite a long time ago. I just haven't got around to using them so what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to drop them into those cracks and then we're going to use a thin CA to try and set them into the cracks pushing them into the cracks as much as I can kind of reminds me of when I did uh, a bowl quite a long time ago called Planet Earth is Blue, I give it a name. Uh, for that one I used chalk. Um, there was a red one and a blue one that I made. Alright, so I've gone around the entire bowl with the blue pigment and I actually used thin CA and then the accelerator and I think we've got it. So what I'm going to do now is mark for the tenon. I'll make my tenon and then sand the outside. So hopefully we just get those blue lines. And not forgetting to mark the center so when we go to reverse this and remove the tenon it's easy to center on the on the lathe
Okay, so at this point I've got it sanded uh, somewhat uh, at a very low grit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue sanding, but I'm going to use uh, oil to wet sand to try and reduce the uh, the amount of dust in the air. I got my dust collector going and the shop bag going, but I think uh, this is the way to go. It's also going to give me an idea of what it looks like. Um, which areas I've got a little bit of punky there that needs to be a little bit of tear out. I didn't notice that before. It's going to show some things that I wasn't noticing. See, I could have perhaps put some more blue in there. But now I've put oil in there, I don't know if I can do that. It's one disadvantage, I guess. But that's okay. Alright, let's continue sanding now that it's wet with 80 grit. Okay. I have sanded through the grits from 80 to 400 grit and I was wet sanding with Mahoney's oil uh, which just reduces the amount of dust in the air. I have the dust collector running and also a shop vac in front to remove as much of the dust as I can. Plus I've got my Trend Air Shield Pro on so trying to eliminate breathing it in and distributing it throughout my shop. Um, so what I'm going to do now is clean off the residue from the surface of the bowl and pull out of as much of that oil as I can, removing the dirt from the surface of the wood. You can see it's pulling that dirt out of the surface of the wood. It's basically sawdust so that we can uh, seal the bowl ready for the final finish which will be Yorkshire grit and Hampshire sheen so I'm going to seal it with a cellulose sanding sealer so that's why I have to remove all of the oil from the surface it's quite effective the uh, the blue pigment with the CA glue is quite effective other colors that would have looked good too maybe have been uh, red like a, a fiery burnt orangey red would it look, it look good um, for coming from the island of Hawaii this piece of wood um, the cracks could have looked like you know kind of resembled um, lava coming from the volcano or blue for the ocean that's kind of what I'm going for anyway so that is now dry I'm going to take the cellulose based sanding sealer, give it a good shake and we'll give this a really really good coat we'll give this a really really good coat, let it soak up as much as it wants this wood is not punky, not at all, it's, it's pretty solid which is always nice Funky wood is definitely troublesome. Alright, so I'm going to get as many coats on as this as it wants to uh, absorb and then I'll get back to you. I have put several coats of Mylan's cellulose based sanding sealer on this and it is now dry, but I don't know if you can see that it's uneven. It doesn't go on perfectly evenly. Um, there's areas that will definitely soak it up more than others like the end grain and areas that it will sit on top of quite nicely like the side grain here and you will have areas that are shiny and areas that are slightly duller so what you have to do before you finish this with Hampshire Sheen and you cut it back with your Yorkshire grit is use a scouring pad or uh, the last sanding uh, paper that you used and just cut that back and it's going to go dull on you, but that's okay. 
because this is not the finish this is a foundation it's sealing the wood for your finish so don't think that your sanding sealer is your finish it's not by any stretch of the imagination okay so now when you look at it if you can tell and you may have to do this a couple of times there's a bit there that needs more attention I want this surface even as can be as far as dull and shiny spots okay so now if you look at it you could probably tell that it is fairly even which is the result that I'm looking for so now we can just rub the dust off burnish that a little bit it's coming back shinier uh, just a little bit but now it is even there's no dull and shiny spots like there was so now I'm going to go ahead and put the Yorkshire grit on and that's going to do its job we're going to put a small amount over the entire piece Okay, so that is all over and in slow speed so that it doesn't spit the Yorkshire grit at me we're going to start working that in and now give it time to do its job so you'll hear it cutting and just do this for a couple of minutes it doesn't really take very long but it's worth taking the time Now we can start bringing the speed up a little bit. So use a fresh piece of paper towel. Go as fast as you can safely. I don't want to go too fast because this is quite a big piece. But you want that friction. By now the Yorkshire grit has reduced in size and it's much finer now. We just need to remove all the residue that's left. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Yorkshire grit microfine and we'll cover the entire piece with a thin layer. Okay, let's get this moving slowly. I've turned the speed back down. Again, let it do its work before you start removing the product. This is going to bring it up to a much finer grip equivalent finish, ready for Hampshire Sheen gloss and Hampshire Sheen microcrystalline wax which will give you that hard wearing fingerprint proof finish that we're looking for bring the speed up just a little bit more moving on to a fresh piece of paper towel start removing the residue still working it in And that's about it folks. What we'll do now is we'll move on to the Hampshire Sheen High Gloss which is going to give us a beautiful finish prior to my crystalline wax. You don't need a whole lot so just put a small amount, coat the whole piece in a fine layer, let it go dry before we buff it. put some microcrystalline wax on this bowl and that will give it the uh, 
durable finish that we're looking for, fingerprint proof and all that. It's a nice hard wearing wax that lasts a long time so the shine will still be shining years from now. So just a thin layer over the whole bowl, we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and buff it off. And that is pretty nice looking. Certainly different with the blue lines, or the blue cracks I should say. We'll get this thing turned around in the lathe and then we'll hollow this out. Now I was thinking of using a core, a coring system, but I'm not going to bother. Um, with all the cracks that are in it, it's just going to give me more bother, I think. So we'll just hollow it out. <music> 